guys, welcome back to Ranger Survival and Fieldcraft. I'm Andrew. And what I'm going to show you are two different ways to use the bow drill set to get a fire going. These are lesser known, kind of more advanced options for the bow drill that we can use to not only safeguard our material, but then to safeguard that ember, prevent it from hitting the ground or prevent it from absorbing moisture and going out. When we need to get a fire going and we're using primitive methods like a bow drill to get that fire going. So I've got a good section of dry cottonwood here. You can see I've already burned in and produced an ember with it. So I know this is gonna work. Now all we have to do for this is create a stop cut in our material down where we want to actually pop off the top of this material, expose it, and then that's where we're actually gonna drill into. So all we have to do now, because we created another stop cut right here, is get out our survival knife and using our baton, simply baton the top of this material off to expose more of our hearth board. And now we have more of that hearth board showing. You can see that piece just comes right off as we baton. The rest of this is protected. We can use it for other things like a makeshift anvil, but all of this is protected from the elements and we only expose what we need. Now what I have to do is carve our divot in the center of our hearth board. So we've got our little divot where our spindle is going to sit. We've already got our spindle shaped. It's just going to sit right in there just like normal for any type of bow drill. Remember. The bottom of our spindle here, it's gonna go in our hearth, it needs to be rounded, more surface area, and then at the top it needs to have a point, and that's the least amount of surface area so we can concentrate all that friction and heat down at the bottom. Plus this point doubles as a vampire defensive tool, taking out vampires in the field. We have that flat portion that's gonna be our catch. And then for this demonstration, we're gonna use just a piece of fat wood as our bearing block. The beauty with this is that the resin inside the fat wood will prevent a lot of the friction from burning in up here and concentrate it down in our hearth. So we're gonna use just some fat wood, this big section right here, as our bearing block. And then we're gonna take off the string from our survival knife that we use to typically carry the knife in the neck carry configuration. We're gonna take that off and use this piece of string as our strength for our bow. Now the technique that I like to use for the bow itself is to find that natural bend. I usually find a stick that's got a Y section in it that we can use just to loop our cordage. And then on that bottom end, the end we're gonna hold, we'll find that center of the curve and just baton right down into that. just a little ways and right there where we've batoned in that's where we're gonna stick our string on our back end to secure it in place and keep it tight now for our bow right here at our little Y juncture for first part of our string we're just gonna create a simple end of the line bow in we've got our running end typically the short end standing in is the longer end take it throw it over our hand open palm Reach up, twist the cordage into just a loop so our standing end is on top. We reach through that loop and grab the standing end. And now what we have is something like an Arby's hat. If you can see that, I call it the Arby's hat method. And then just taking our running end, we go through the Arby's hat up over top, back, we grab the running end, both pieces, and simply pull tight. And now we have an end of the line bowline. And all we have to do is put that over top of one of the forks of our Y and secure it in place. And then for the other end, we have just enough quarters to get in there. We'll pull it through to keep it tight. And then on the back side where we split, we're just gonna do a simple overhand knot to keep it tight. If you have excess cordage, you can just wrap it around and tie it off any method that you want. But this overhand knot will ensure that our entire bow 
is taut or the string is taut. So here is our bow. Now to test it, all we have to do is take our spindle, we go up in between the string and the bow itself, wrap it one time with the string, pull it taut, and it should be nice and tight for us. Now we can put down our hearth. This next portion is called the burn-in. This is probably the most important portion of making a bow drill fire. The burn-in is how we're going to spin that spindle or that drill into our hearth board and set those pieces or marry them up with friction. This way, once we actually carve our notch, the bow drill will be set already and we won't take a chance of having that spindle fly out of our bow drill as we're going for an ember. Grab our bearing block. Again, wrapping our spindle. Set all the pieces in place. Line up and then set it. Holding it in place, take our non-dominant hand that we're using to hold everything in place and keep that tight to our leg. Right here, our shin bone. That way nothing is moving or not moving around as we're doing the bow drill. And then we just spin, nice and easy. And all we're doing is trying to get a burn in and create that burned portion of our spindle to marry everything up. So we just keep going until we've got a good sized burn. I can already smell the smoke coming off the bow drill. Okay, put everything aside. It's important to keep our spindle up off the ground and not expose it to any moisture that might be in the ground. So now is that second technique, how we're going to use the hearth board itself as its own catch. We're not going to create a catch and we're not going to create a notch that goes off to one side similar to this one up here. We're not going to use that. What we're going to do instead is carve a V-notch connecting our second burn-in with our first burn-in. So this may take a little bit of doing, but all we're going to do is just safely carve a V-notch connecting these two portions together. Well, we want it fairly wide, maybe a quarter of an inch or so. And we're just going to keep going. Move that so I don't cut the string. We're just going to keep going until we connect these. Now you can see our V-notch connecting our two burn-ins, similar to if we had cut a V-notch out to the side here, much like this one. All we're doing is creating that tapered notch yet again, using that V-notch a little wider toward our first burn-in, narrower at our second burn-in. That way, the material is naturally pushed down our V-notch. This end is also a little deeper. That way, the material, just gravity, carries the material down through our notch to collect right in here. And that should be good enough. And before we get going, we can look to our split end on our bow. And if we've got a lot of slack, we can just pull, tighten this up, and then reapply our knot. Make sure you sweep all the material away. That way you've got a nice working area and nothing is going to affect your bow drill as you go. Just grab our material again, bearing block spindle, go up in between, wrap it around, set it, put our foot on, grab our bearing block, hold it in place again, and now we're ready to go for that ember.
give it oxygen, it's smoking on its own. A little tricky with this, just because that ember is in that notch. But as long as it's burning or smoking by itself, we'll be good. Still smoking. We got our bird's nest or tinder bundle ready to go. Put it down, take our spindle, and then <laughs> knock that ember free first, and then put it in. Okay, set everything aside. And it's the same thing. Now, just blow this into flame. There you go. Notchless bow drill and the hasty bow drill technique. All right, so notchless bow drill technique. Now, again, if we needed to get another fire going and this notch is useless, all we have to do, create another stop notch with our saw, about an inch or so down. something like that, and then we just baton this off, create a new divot, and then a new burn-in, and then we can actually carve the normal notch to the side, just like this one, if we wanted to. Now we can do one out of the burn-in. We can clean up our bearing block as well as our spindle. Before long we're going to need a new set. <laughs> Get it into a nice point. Another burn-in. Still get that char on here. With our burn-in, it's important to go slow and then drill in in a constant direction. Don't weeble wobble, don't move a lot. We're trying to set these pieces perfectly so they don't wobble as we go and they don't fly out. Now all we have to do is carve our traditional notch. Actually, what we can do is remove a little of this. We can remove some of the front material to make the distance between our burn and the notch and the end of the wood just a little bit smaller. Something like that. And now we can cut in our notch. Something about like that. We can clean it up with our knife a little bit. Open that up. 
and then go a little deeper into our material right inside that burn in about an eighth of an inch or so into that burn in probably could have helped to make this burn in a little closer to the edge itself but we're learning and now we're ready to go for our ember again all right step up again line up and now we're ready to go easy spindle tap it free got something here Let's see if I can scoop this guy back on kind of I think we got enough to work with here dump the rest Right on top. And we'll let it cherry up. Same thing as usual. That's a good training right here for Firecraft. See it's smoking by itself still. That's two embers from the same set. Different methods in just a couple of minutes. Simply add it to our tinder bundle and blow it into flame. And there's your fire again. And now that we're done with our firecraft, we've got that fire going. We can once again take off that paracord from our bow. Undo the knots, which might be tricky since they're tightened down a little bit. And then simply turn this back into our necklace for our survival knife. Put a nice overhand in there. Grab our survival knife. Reattach. I mean, put this back over our neck and carry it and move on to the next task. So that was... <laughs> Two bow drills, technically three, but two bow drills and the time it took to simply remove the section of material very easily, carve a little divot, burn in, and then carve the notch and go for an ember. So in less than a few minutes, we're able to get two embers and then two tinder bundles blown into flame to get a fire going. So this is a very effective method. But I hope you guys like this video. If you did like this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave me a comment in the comment section. I always appreciate your feedback. I want to thank you guys for everything you do for me, for this channel, for your likes, your views, your subscriptions, your comments, your feedback, and your shares. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks. Stay safe out there. Mm -hmm.